SpaceX Starship disassembled again, website online and JAXA HTV-8's resupply to the ISS. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. First of all, I'd like to mention that we have new merchandise on the store. Most will have noticed by now that our Raptor Evolution shirt has been on the store for a while now and it's been selling a lot. And now we're beating SpaceX at their own game. Where it roughly took them 5 months to build it, it only took us 3 days to get it to Mars. And now you can buy it on the store and show your appreciation for one of the most unique flying machines ever built. Check out the link in the description or the reel directly under this video for some more information. What a week! As always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates If you thought that now that the presentation is done, everything would be finished on the Starship, you thought wrong. As predicted, the quick build before the presentation was just for the show. SpaceX wanted to show a Starship prototype that would mostly look finished, ready for takeoff. That obviously isn't the case though. All those aerodynamic parts and quick add-ons are now coming apart again. SpaceX is deconstructing the prototype almost in the same way they built it. First aerodynamic fillings were taken off, then the whole stack was divided again and the fairing section was taken down onto the jig again. No doubt to finish vital parts that were not done yet. A lot of the needed interior for Starship is not finished yet. Everything needs to be checked for mistakes after the very fast build they only finished for the presentation. Elon Musk climbed inside Starship when it was still waiting for the presentation to happen. He wanted to take a look at what progress his workers had made on the inside. He uploaded a small video of his exploration trip inside Starship in which we can see the cargo section of Starship. As you can see there are still lots of temporary catwalks and ladders inside. All of this will be gone in the finished version. You can also see the header tanks and batteries in the nose cone. Elon has already confirmed that the nose cone will be modified in the future. The now separate header tanks will be gone and the nose will be turned into a cone shaped tank to reduce unnecessary weight. If this design is kept on later versions this might mean that our romantic big viewing window on top will be gone, which would be a pity. He also talked about the batteries. Right now there are 4 100 kW Tesla batteries in the nose. They will be moving the motors needed to actuate the fins. These motors by the way will be Tesla Model 3 motors and right now they do not directly actuate the fins. They move hydraulic fluid which in return moves the fins. This system will be changed in the future though to get rid of the hydraulic system, reduce parts and weight and in return make the system lighter and less complex. So as said, right now Starship is in half again and work has resumed on the fairing and tank sections in preparation for the 22 km test flight. Elon stated that we should expect that first flight to happen within the next two months. So the October estimate has already slightly moved and is not certain anymore. Workers have also begun pouring concrete into one of the three ring wall jig forms. Remember how I said that these new jigs could also be for Mark III and even later versions on a recent episode? So that prediction was right. Thanks to all who discussed it with me in the comment section after the episode. Your feedback was much appreciated. Also work has resumed at the launch site. We can already clearly see the layout from the assessment we analyzed in episode 32. Which definitely is worth a look if you haven't seen it yet. The methane tanks have been placed by now and the outlines of the huge landing pad for Starship are more and more visible. The whole facility is beginning to look like what we were able to see in the construction plans. Phase 3 is in full preparation. Elon said that we should expect this third and final phase to not take longer than a year. With orbit being achieved within the next 6 months and that the next flight after a successful 22 km flight this year would probably already be a full stack of Starship and Super Heavy within the next 4 months. Elon also said though that Mark 4 or 5 of Starship would be orbital. This would suggest that Mark 3 would never fly. So there might still be uncertainties in this schedule. Work has already started at what looks to be a structure at the launch pad. According to the construction plan, Starship will take off on top of the large plateau where the fuel farms are located. So this most definitely is a launch mount in an early construction stage. As you can see in the original construction plans, SpaceX initially intended for Starship prototypes to be launched from a concrete pad, much like Starhopper was launched. This seems to have changed now. 
This structure is made of thick metal beams and this can only mean one thing. It's supposed to take a lot of weight. A fully fueled Starship prototype, for example? Now the next question would be if there will be a flame diverter integrated already. Because if SpaceX intends to not have to rebuild it after the 22 km flight and launch Super Heavy from here as well, it will definitely need some sort of flame diverter system. Drilling and piling work have also continued at the landing pad. It's still not clear yet what the piling is needed for. We'll definitely keep a close look at it in the next few episodes to see what else SpaceX might have changed in their plans to launch and land Starships. SpaceX Starship Website SpaceX has been very busy on all fronts and after the presentation they opened up a special section on their website to show us all those animations and renders again they showed at the presentation. If you haven't looked at it yet, it definitely is worth it. Full of data and illustrations, it gives an excellent overview of what the project's goal is and what Elon Musk and his engineers envision for the future. A general overview of Starship and Super Heavy, as well as a list of different use cases including a rudimentary animation of a Starship deploying a huge satellite out of the 9 meter diameter and 19 meter high payload compartment can be found on the website. With its 1,100 cubic meters of payload capacity, Starship creates possibilities for new missions including space telescopes even larger than the James Webb, it says. You can re-watch the animations from the presentation and look at an almost funny looking animation of a Starship docked to the ISS. In comparison, Starship will dwarf anything we've seen fly into space. A link is in the description. HTV-8 resupply mission arrives at the ISS. While SpaceX is very quiet when it comes to Falcon 9 launches right now, Japan has been very busy sending another resupply mission to the ISS with a flawless launch and berthing. Last Tuesday, JAXA successfully launched its H-2B carrier rocket from its brand new second pad at the Tanegashima Space Center's Yoshinobu launch complex. H-2B rockets are expandable and liquid-fueled with solid fuel strap-on boosters and are launched from the Tanegashima Space Center in Japan. Mitsubishi and JAXA have been primarily responsible for design, manufacture and operation of H-2B and it made its first flight in 2009. Originally planned for a launch on September 10th, the launch had to be postponed due to a fire during pre-launch operations on the launch pad. The fire had been contained by fire suppression systems and no damage was done to the rocket. The cause of the fire was later revealed to be due to an increase in the concentration of liquid oxygen used to cool the H-2B rocket engine. Last week's launch then went as intended, sending the H-2 transfer vehicle, also known as Konoturi or HTV, on its trajectory towards the ISS. The HTV is about 9.8 meters long with a diameter of 4.4 meters. Its total mass when empty is 10.5 tons with a payload capacity of 6 tons. The HTV is comparable in function to the Russian Progress, European ATV, Commercial Dragon and Commercial Cygnus spacecraft, all of which bring supplies to the ISS. After its arrival at the ISS on Saturday, the HTV was successfully berthed and unloading has already started. Included in this mission's cargo are six orbital replacement units for batteries on the station's integrated truss structure. These consist of lithium-ion batteries which will replace the original nickel-hydrogen units that launched with the truss segment. Installation of the replacement batteries will require several spacewalks, keeping the astronauts on the ISS busy in the future. This battery replacement has been going on for a while now. About three quarters of the old batteries will have been replaced with these spacewalks and a final batch of batteries will be sent to the ISS on the next HTV mission. Konoturu will remain berthed until November as the crew unloads its cargo and replaces it with materials and hardware to be disposed of. At the end of its stay, Canadarm 2 will be used to remove Konoturu from its berth and release it away from the station. The old batteries will be loaded into the HTV, burning up in the atmosphere with the spacecraft when it re-enters. Besides the replacement batteries, Konoturi carried several science experiments and CubeSats to the ISS. Like all the other resupply missions, the HTV missions play a vital part in the international efforts of resupplying the ISS with needed cargo to continue work above the Earth. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. How long do you think it will take SpaceX to get the Mark 1 prototype flight ready? And did you watch the HTV launch live as I did? As always, tell me in the comments.
Here we are again at the end of the episode, thanking all those patrons for their continuing support. We just managed to hit our next goal of supplying What About It with much needed equipment for the Acer Open Day 2019. If you want to become involved behind the scenes and maybe get closer to the team bringing you What About It, consider joining the club and get access to our Discord. Sorry for taking so long. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Ken Buxbaum. Your support is much appreciated. You rock. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, remember to like and subscribe as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content as this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. My name is Felix uh, and I'm in the wrong position. Flu farms. The flu farms. Konotoro will we. What? Konotoro will we. Konotoro will we. We just hit our next goal of resupplying the ISS. <laughs> yeah.